gotta I gotta adjust my white balance. I look kind of dead. Oh yeah, like a little gray. A little I gray. Think. Maybe maybe you are a little dead. <laughs> maybe we're all no, a little I... dead. <laughs> I uh, I adjusted it when I was recording the video. Oh, the thing we published yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanted to look a little dead for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk it about it. So SS, SST Ion is. I don't. This is the, the general availability. What is this? Because there's been a few releases. It's it was kind of like kind of available. Now it's really available. Yeah. Well, it's it's like because everything. It's funny, and I wonder if we're doing this wrong because every other company is like a hundred percent secretive until they mm. like launch it. Yeah, yeah. Which I get because it makes a bigger impact, and it's like you don't spread out the, you don't like dilute the excitement at all. Yeah, as much. But you guys we just can't help talking about shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just excited about the stuff I'm working on. So I'm just like, I just want to constantly talk about it, and that has like different benefits. Uh. But yeah, it does feel like there's like endless releases uh, yeah. in, in that sense. But yeah, I think for us, we were just we were just working in public. So if you were watching our docs and watching our commits and looking at yeah. the repo, like you could use all of it this whole time. Ha- hashtag build in public. Uh, build in public, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing the indie hacker strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Except people actually care. Uh, <laughs> Oh man, shots fired so early in the podcast. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I so... prefer the way you guys do it. I mean, I like knowing, but it does raise the question. I'm constantly like, "Wait, should I be? Is, can I use this now? Yeah, is exactly. It, <laughs> is it ready for me? But now it's, there's it, a YouTube video, so I feel like I should use it now. <laughs> it's it's really out there. Yeah, there's like, I mean, I think it, it, the downside is it feels like a bunch of false starts, uh, which maybe we'll try it differently for the next one, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, so. We're calling this generally available. To be honest, it's because we don't want to call it a 1.0 because we're not like that confident, and we don't want to say ah. like it's stable because we're not that confident. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we we <laughs> are, but like we need to we give us like a couple of weeks where people are actually using it and, and, and nothing crazy happens. But uh, yeah, so it's generally available, um, which is great because I know a lot of people are waiting on it. It's been amazing to see how many people have one already been using it just from just people that are really excited, have like found ways to use it, even though we haven't documented it. They've even found ways to use stuff that like we didn't uh, technically support. We we're going to support, but we didn't technically support. And so somebody was like, oh, I want to like spin up an upstash queue. And obviously with Ion, like we're going to help you spin up everything. Yeah. But I forgot to do one little thing to make that easier. And someone replied with like a perfect way to use that, even though we didn't intentionally support they found a way to use it anyway. And this keeps happening over and over. Like people are like finding clever ways to to do things that uh we didn't foresee or we did foresee and we haven't actually supported yet. It feels like it feels like the community is like water and like you like you know when you like spill water, it gets in like every crack. That's what it feels yeah. like. It feels like they're like flowing into like every crack and every groove and, and, and figuring everything out. Um, so that's the benefit so of the open fun. thing, right? Like you guys yeah. can get functionality. I mean, even if it's not like PRs or whatever, but like the community's eyes on stuff early just opens up all kinds of awareness for you guys, I'd think. Yeah, that's exactly why we do it. Because it, there's just, that's a benefit of open source. You can like really scale out some stuff that you just can't do internally. So yeah, people found all kinds of bugs. We did get a bunch of PRs too, which have been great. Um, but yeah, so we, for yesterday we wanted to do like, okay, like a, this, what's, this is going to feel like a normal launch. So of course we always do one of our videos, uh, which <laughs> yeah, I, I was kind of posting about this morning where our videos have constraints because I can only allocate so much time for it. So this one yeah. that I, we did yesterday, I was like, okay, Monday's going to be the day that I do it. And I literally just sat and I filmed and edited it at the same time as I, like I would like record some stuff, edit it, see how it went. Then I would yeah. film more stuff. Then like, I would kind of do it all together. Yeah. Um, and that works because I didn't have time to spend like really fleshing out a script ahead of time and really thinking at things through. I needed to like try it as I went along and like, a lot of it wasn't good at first, and I like thought of new lines and like re-recorded and stuff. But 
I like your it's humor. Uh, I like the way you write <laughs> these things. It's always like, oh, Dex can do that. <laughs> like it, it's, you've, it's like a whole second skill you have. You should. Oh, the talent show at React Miami. You should write a little. A little. I don't know. What is? I was thinking about that. I, Michelle mentioned there's a talent show at the opening party, and I for, and she hasn't mentioned anything about it. And she hasn't like asked anyone. So I don't know if that's oh, still happening. I hope is it is. Anybody signed up for it? Yeah. Huh. Was is there a sign up? I don't know. Maybe it's just a spontaneous get up on the stage, show your talents. <laughs> that, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Maybe I'll just. I was thinking about. Oh yeah, I can just get up on stage for five minutes and like roast everyone. Just roast. That I can yeah, possibly yeah, yeah. imagine. That's your skill, and everyone <laughs> knows you have that skill. I guess it's kind of the same uh, part of your brain, probably, as these like comedy sketches that you're able to write, which is always oh, like, yeah, exactly. surprising to me. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Th this one was. I think the format. So again, we're very constrained, which is good in one sense because we're not professional comedy writers. So if you gave us like infinite time and budget, I think we would just be completely lost. <laughs> uh, so it's always constrained to like, what can I do at my desk talking to the camera? That's like, you know, yeah. somewhat funny. Um, but with this one, what <laughs> the way I went about it was like, I was like, let me think of every annoying question we're going to get uh, or like just just predict every single thing that's yeah, going to come up get ahead of it. Yeah, then let me just give like a dumbass response to every single thing. Because <laughs> uh, the 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 one that really sticks out is the uh, like, what's the point of SST? Like, why can't I just use Plumi directly? Yeah. <laughs> like, we've been getting this question for so I long. Think I asked like, you that question. At one point. <laughs> I know it's a reasonable question. It's just like yeah. we we first started as a thin rapper over CDK from day one, like and myself too. Okay. When I first found SST, <laughs> I was like, this is cool, but I'm going to try to stick to CDK. Uh, Cause I don't want to use like a, use like a rapper. Yeah. And then eventually I just got sucked in. I think that's what happens to everyone. So that's like a constant thing. And I'm like, Oh, we're gonna have to go through this again. Cause we're starting off again on top of yeah. a new thing. Yeah. Like we'll be less than in the future, but we are kind of thin right now uh but yeah everyone's, <laughs> that, that does come up um the benchmark stuff i thought was also a classic yeah, yeah, thing yeah. like we put so much effort into the speed and we're it's like we hope people notice like it is, <laughs> it is faster but like there's a lot of cases where it's still slow yeah um did you see the cloud formation yeah. announcement that like this 40 percent faster, faster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay one that was the longest blog post i've ever seen for something <laughs> so basic okay Could let me explain point. yeah yeah the the con and the, you know what the concept they did was good it was uh they're gonna add an intermediary state for resources so when a resource is created like it's been sent to aws scheduled to be created it gets an intermediary state instead of waiting for it to fully be like created and replicated and all that uh once it's in that intermediary state other resources that depend on it can assume that it'll probably come up so they can they can go. So it like it's it's less blocking. Yeah. Very straightforward. But for some reason, it included like a full tutorial on how to build a new application on CloudFormation. And I was like, this is so long. I just want to know what they did. So that was that was a good improvement. And I think I think uh yeah, like like other IAC tools should like probably have something like that. They kind of already do, but I think they could do it a little bit more explicitly. Um, so yes, we did see that, but then we go to use it and it's just still a slow. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it, I, mean, I know <laughs> there's so many reasons that you guys made the move you did that are not just performance, like yeah, not just the yeah. speed or the pain of cloud formation deployments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to play with it. I'm, I'm, it's going to be a big part of, I'm working on a course as you know, Yeah. I've been filming this morning actually. Uh, oh, wow. and it's going to be, I'm so excited that ION is timing out. Like I'm so slow at making things and now yeah, I'm it's glad that worked March. out. <laughs> and Ion <laughs> is ready and I can just make my course on Ion instead of anything else. I'm I'm pumped. Yeah. Pro AWS.dev. Just a little shill if you guys want to check it out. Yeah, um, I actually think it's gonna be letter. especially good for your course because the one thing that I'm actually really proud of is how much we removed, where mm. it's like a single thing and a single config file, and that's all you need to know. Like yeah. No NPM packages, no like split your stuff up into stacks. Like, no, like none of that like yeah, yeah, extra yeah. stuff you don't the really stack need to concept know. concept is so like, I, I hate it. It's I'm so hard to explain to people, too. It's yeah. like, why do you have to split it? Okay, but then like, how do I split it? It's so it? arbitrary. Like, split it? It's just like yeah. a leaked abstraction or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people commented like, wow, this is so simple. And I'm like, so glad that came through. Like, especially getting rid of like 
all the NPM confusions where it's like, okay, SST is then this version, and that needs a very specific version of AWS yeah, yeah. Lib. So if they're out of sync, then then your types are going to be messed up. And yeah, it's uh, we're really focused on the simplicity this time around. What, what is the escape hatch again? It's just Terraform providers. Like, can any Terraform provider work? How does that? Yeah, so <laughs> it's. It's funny, like we, everyone makes fun of web because it's just like layers of shit on top of each other. Like, <laughs> like Nux is built on top of Nitro, which is built on top of Vite, which is built on, you know <laughs> on top of ES Build, which also is, so we always make fun of that. But then <laughs> if you look at this stuff, it's pretty similar. <laughs> where uh, SST uses Pulumi for infrastructure as code, but Pulumi really mostly invented like the state management and like the language bindings and and how all that stuff works mm -hmm. uh, and like really clever design around that but for the actual stuff that like calls apis calls aws yep. calls whatever they mostly rely on terraform providers so you can adapt a terraform provider to work inside pulumi and most of the things that are in the pulumi registry are like sourced from terraform providers mm -hmm. which is smart because you tap into that existing ecosystem you don't like fragment it which is great yeah uh, and they do have some native ones so if you look at their registry a lot of stuff that you need is there. Um, even like newer stuff, like I was surprised to see that Upstash had uh, had stuff in the Plumy registry. And then any Terraform provider that's not that hasn't been adapted, there is a process to adapt it. And we're probably going to spend a bunch of time like doing that for people for stuff that is not in there. So, did you show me something where like I can? Cre what was the thing you showed me where like I could create some kind of binding for any? Thing I want to oh yeah we can make any linkable resources yeah the linkable yeah. thing yeah, yeah. so we rename form? binding to link no that, that that's link. actually if you think of what again going back to the question of why wouldn't you just use Pulumi directly uh really the only thing we actually invented is a concept of linking that's like our main feature um yeah. but when we haven't documented this yet uh but we now have a way to like flag any resource let's say you're like oh i'm creating a redis instance in upstash uh I want to link this to my functions. You can like mark it linkable and say what fields should get exposed to the function and everything will work. Uh, but that's not documented yet because we haven't finalized the API, but we will do that. I like the word link over bind, by the way. Binding was always yeah. kind of confusing to me. You know why we had to switch? It's just it, when you actually go through designing some of this stuff, it's like really funny what you have to consider. Uh, the word bind. Cloudflare so, natively has no. a concept called binding. Oh. So. If we're going to support Cloudflare, it's very confusing because there's like a Cloudflare uh, binding in our binding. So that forced the change. But yeah. then we're like, okay, link is the verb. What are the things that get linked? And that was like a whole conversation. <laughs> like resources get linked. And it, was, it was, we spent like days on it, literally. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a better word and it sounds like lighter. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I'm excited. Excited for Ion. Yeah. It's a new too. era. Do you feel like a weight lifted after this release or is it like it's same old, same old every day right now? Um, I'll like, feel a weight think... lifted once we get all the Cloudflare stuff done. Hmm. Because right now we it's roughly a lateral move. Like obviously a, like infinite things are better, but capability wise, it's roughly the same capabilities. Yeah. Uh, but once we do native Cloudflare support, then, then it's going to be cool. You guys launched your docs, right? Yeah. Is there a uh, a document for migration? I'm assuming. No, <laughs> not no, <yet>. okay. <laughs> because we we explicitly say this is best for new uh, oh, okay. projects yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, but so probably lucky can't for you, move my big repo over to this. No, right but now. we're gonna do that for you most likely. Oh, you're gonna do it for me, like a pull request. Yeah, because we I'm we're gonna work through our own stuff, and then we're gonna like yeah. work through your stuff, and that's gonna be how we uh we like figure out what the migration process should be, what tools are missing, et cetera. So lucky for I you. I love it. Lucky for me. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. That's, again, the benefit of just randomly making your shit open source. Like you yeah. don't have to, we can just decide to do that on our own without any coordination on your end. I love it so much. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, what's, what's going on? I feel like I've been disconnected for a while. What, is there anything going on right now? Well, it's uh, funny because like we usually talk about other news, but this week like we were kind of the news so. yeah you're the news <laughs> so we just we went over the news it was you is there anything else going on i feel like the only thing i see on twitter is people angry about people's on twitter or something i don't know or angry yeah, about everyone, it not being fun 
Everyone's what did, what did this wave that, come from? Yeah. I'm not seeing that. I'm either. not either. And I thought yeah. I was just because I'm not on Twitter enough. But like, no. what are people's timelines look like right now? There's a lot of talk <clears throat> about Twitter not being fun anymore. Whenever I see things, this comes up every once in a while. And whenever I'm like not on the same page as that, I, f- I feel good because I feel like, okay, I like curated the right the right mm. bubble where I'm not mm. seeing all this stuff that's annoying other people. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have, there were a few things, I guess. Did we talk about Astro DB? Oh, ben we have talked about Astro DB. Was this week? Oh, I didn't see anything about Terso. Yeah, they did a launch Terso. week. Okay. Terso. Terso? 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 I don't know. Terso? I don't know. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I think companies should stop doing launch weeks. Uh, mm. Very few companies, especially startups, have enough stuff for a launch week. You're better yeah, off doing tough. a launch day and just like being like, boom, here's everything we've got. Yeah. Uh, like, like AWS, when they do kind of like pre invent or reinvent and it's a whole week of launches, that makes sense. There's a lot, yeah. a lot mm-hmm. of stuff in AWS. But yeah, if you're a startup, it'd be tough. To have enough yeah. noise for a whole week. Yeah. And and Fred said Fred said for him, for Astro, they see it more as a way to like coordinate and plan as opposed to actually caring about the actual week. Um yeah. but still I just feel like it's just hard. Like I, I like okay, so and then Terso, 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I questioned the pronunciation. Uh, Terso. 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 <laughs> In 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 the SQL Light as a service company's launch week, uh, <laughs> they uh, they had some really interesting stuff there. But then by day three, it was like we have HIPAA and SO and SOC two support, and we'll sign BAAs. Like that's not enough for all day. That's, a, like, that's a tough one to announce. How many people were like, "Oh, they didn't already." Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take this yeah, down. So, um so they had some interesting stuff so i always talk about because they are trying to one of the things that their architecture enables is doing things like uh having a database per customer um Mm -hmm. which has some benefits and i've done this in the past specifically and i talked about this a bunch but i've done this in the past when i was in healthcare uh we would sign customers and each customer was worth like six figures a year intense security process, like all that stuff. So to make it simple, we just deployed a database. It's actually a file-based database per customer. So we can just say, your data is isolated, it's in its yep. own thing, whatever, makes those conversations easier. Um, and that was great, but there were a lot of downsides that you're just used to being able to query across your data sets, you're used to be able to doing schema changes across all your customers. Like it just comes with a lot of overhead. Um, which is why I don't like reach for that pattern unless it's really, really required. Yeah. Um, but uh, Terso added some features to help with that. So they added the ability to do to have like a primary database, and if you apply schema changes to that, like it gets applied to all the databases. So even if you have a thousand databases, it, you know it's like one step. Yep. Um, and they also add this ability to query across them. That one though, I don't think is actually going to work that well if I understand it right. Um, uh, so, but anyway, point being is like, they're trying to address this. If they're trying to push this idea of you can do this pattern, they, they need to solve some of these problems. Um, so I think those two things are great, uh, great things to launch, but just do it all in one day, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a one day announcement. Well, I, I yeah. need to go back to the Terso thing. Cause I, there's been so much buzz on SQLite. Like Terso literally uses SQLite. It's literally like that file that's like, your yeah, database. It's a, yeah, it's a fork of SQLite called libsql, which adds like a bunch of replication features okay so i i have i i've seen people even not using terso talking about the benefits uh, well kinsey dodds talks about it with epic web uh the benefits of sqlite and people do it like at the edge I, my question is like is it does it force that pattern where every edge node is its own database and then how does that work do they replicate like do you interact with this thing like you would a normal database now i'm speaking specifically to terso do you do you like just query it and it's just a database or is it like you have to choose which database you're querying because this is so no, confusing you, to me you, you just choose it so if we look at who's doing this it's uh so Tercel's one lie has their own stuff uh with lightfs and then cloudflare is not offering like any traditional sql databases they're only offering D- cloudflare d1 which is a sql based thing 
Uh, and obviously all their stuff is like crazy as replicated and stuff. So yeah, in a lot of ways, it looks like a normal database. It's a, it, you have a thing that you can query, you can sell, send SQL statements to, there's a schema, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that it replicates to me is like a bonus. And I, I, I think bonus is even overstating. I think it's a thing you can do, right? It's a thing you can yeah. do, but it's similarly like you guys use Postgres. Do you guys have read replicas? Yeah. Yeah. Our okay, writes so, and our reads are split and we have a few yeah. replicas on the read side. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's just that. Wait, it's just that. Okay. So there's one writer. Mm-hmm. There's only one like writer node. And where does that live? Is that at the edge? Because so, like, I, no, it can't be right. Because it has to be at a single okay, location. So it's in some region, and then it just every it's just read replicas in every node, every like edge location. Okay, yep, well that exactly. makes way more sense. So yeah, all the yeah. writes are still having to go back to one central writer instance. That that's the thing I was hung up on. It's like if all of these are just like individual SQL light files living on the edge <laughs> where's the source yeah. of truth and how is yeah. that how does that work okay yeah. that makes a lot more sense i i do think though that i think the replica thing is a little overstated i get why uh these companies talk about that a lot because it's like a key differentiator because you can have like a thousand replicas mm-hmm. uh but and that, that, that's cool, but it like just comes with a lot of complexity. Like I get there's the advantages, but most people have never even deployed Postgres with a single read replica. Cause you, yeah, you the, know, the you only reason, the only reason we have read replicas is we use serverless V2 and there's a ceiling on how much that can scale. So yeah. by splitting up our rights and then having multiple readers, we just raise the ceiling. It doesn't increase our cost really. I mean, there's a little bit of additional cost for each instance, I guess, but it's really just raising the ceiling of how much compute we can scale to. Cause in our peak times we yeah. use more than one, like 128 ACU instance yeah. can provide. Like your writer, so, your right, your rights are capped. We can scale the reads. Right. And we're not close to hitting our right. Like, yeah. Cause you're not, you're most, ACUs. yeah. 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 The, 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 there's like this natural phenomenon where most high scale things tend to be, uh, read heavy. Yeah. Like public yeah, oh, stuff. And, you know, and like more writers, more reason writers. Yeah. Yeah. Even if we had a lot of like interactivity stuff that where the users are writing to the database, like that's a percentage of your users that actually do. Yeah, exactly. Do that stuff. But we mostly, all of our rights are mostly internal. Like it's our stuff yeah. writing stats to databases and stuff like that. And then the reading is just generating pages. So yeah, by like a ton reads is our, our much heavier workload. Yeah. It's it's like nice that the world works that way that most people are lurkers yeah. and a small percentage are writers and that like trickles all it's the way down into the when it comes to fact. database architecture yeah 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 <laughs> so keep lurking uh, don't don't get <laughs> any ideas here don't start clicking on everything <laughs> yeah um, now nah, we need to be a creator we can't handle it no exactly um, but yeah so I would say most people haven't even gotten to that point I think even read replicas are like a so a small percentage of yeah projects sure um, so that's why i think focusing on the replicas is a little weird because it is tricky for someone that's 100 percent used to having a single like primary database node that does both to switch because in your case it's probably fine because like you said most writes are happening internally but there's all kinds of weird stuff where like if you have a comment section and like you press enter to submit a comment and the page reloads all the comments it might pull it from the reader which hasn't have which hasn't replicated your right yet and it'll look yeah. like your right hasn't showed up so that read read after right thing yeah. um so i'm not saying it's like impossible it's just like a new thing you have to think about yeah uh and then when you have you know lots of replicas like hundreds of them it just becomes a bigger question in practice i think it what it ends up looking like is uh you know, like you have, you have like a database per customer or whatever, like it's really just like a couple people ever using the database. It's never like experiencing anything crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so I can see how it works, but yeah, I don't know. To me, the, there's just a lot of like things that come up, right? Like you guys can just plug in BI tools, plug in ETL tools to get that data out into other places, do queries, like support the operations of your company. Like there's a lot of things that come up when you're starting to use some of these more, uh, like exotic database offerings. Yeah. 
Yeah, Terso, yeah. I, I, there's a lot of like buzz. I mean, I know people that are into it, uh, but I'd never really used it. So the, all these questions around SQLite have been lingering in my head. Just hadn't gotten to it, to asking them. Yeah, I think to me, if I step back and look at it, there's nothing there that's meaningfully different yet that would make me use it instead. I think from a for these companies, operations-wise, it allows them to do weird things that other companies can't, like offer like thousands of databases for a low low price. Yeah. Um, but that's like interesting for the business. It's not interesting for like the end user as much. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yep. So okay, uh, Astro DB. I'm a big Astro user. I have not had time <laughs> to really sink in. I think we've had access to Astro DB in like some kind of a beta form for a yeah. long time, and I still haven't looked at it. So could you please <laughs> catch me up to speed on Astro DB? Yeah, so Astro DB is built on top of uh, Terso. So, oh, it, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we are again. Uh, Back yeah, to the Terso. layers, the yeah, layers, layers, turtles layers all the way on down. top of layers. Um, <laughs> yeah. So again, they probably get the same question: Why wouldn't I just use Terso? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this is where I start feeling like House of Cards, and and like. I love Astro, so I'm not trying to throw like shade at Astro, but I start feeling like the number of abstractions on top of, I mean, you guys deal with this with SST. Like mm -hmm. we are so many layers thick now. I know. Sometimes I just worry that this is a house of cards and it's all just going to collapse. And like, there's going to be yeah. two layers again. I don't know. It's probably not going to happen. <laughs> None of us are learning yeah. assembly at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think typically the things at the top collapse, the things that are in like the middle and the bottom are, are kind of here. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's, it's, uh, okay. So if you step back, I think Astro went through this thing where like they came out, they got a lot of attention and people wanted to use it for everything. So they got pulled in a lot of directions, but if you look mm -hmm. at what they originally really set out to do is it's actually very simple, like kill WordPress, right? You want to like so mm -hmm. much of still yeah. built on WordPress. You want, if you kill WordPress, you're like a multi-billion dollar company, right? That's, that's huge. Um, a big part of WordPress is the fact that like there was just a database there that came with it and all plugins could use it to store their data and the user could use it for the native WordPress feature. So just having some sort of persistence built in, it's like a low level primitive that like enables all these higher things. Like, you know, the people there's like plugins that build like a Shopify equivalent inside WordPress, right? Like people have taken yeah. this thing to a crazy place. Uh, so to get there, it is helpful if Astro says most Astro users are using this thing to store their data. And that I think is a key thing to like allow this ecosystem yeah. to pop up. Like someone might drop in like an Astro commerce plugin that yeah. just like, you know, lets you create products and store them and, and all of that. So, uh, I think right now it's positioned a little low level, like it's a developer tool cause they like integrated drizzle into it. They have like a schema definition language and, and all this stuff. But to me, I see it as in the distant future, uh, you're mostly configuring Astro with the template, adding some plugins. If you have a developer, they can kind of customize everything, but it's mostly like low code stuff. You see how this database is a key component to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think that's where it makes a lot, a lot of sense to me. It's I've never considered the Astro replacing, uh, WordPress angle. Is that like a thing they've talked about publicly? Like that that's their angle? I think, I don't know if they talked about it publicly, but, uh, like just I've definitely, kind of intuited. Like, well, I think it, it seems that way. And, and Fred has explicitly yeah. talked about it. Okay. Uh, so it, it's just so interesting yeah. to think about like the Twitter perception of like replacing WordPress would be like, what, why would you, who cares? WordPress is yeah. so old, but like the <laughs> economic impact of replacing WordPress, like if they actually succeed, it's a huge, yeah. huge market. It's like mm -hmm. most of the internet powered by, by WordPress. So it's funny, like the disconnect. I just imagine on Twitter, if they were to announce, like, we now have this percentage share of WordPress sites have converted to Astro. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Who yeah. cares? But it's like actually a, a huge lot deal. Of, a lot of people care. A lot of dollars yeah. care. Yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because I think even for the people working on Astro, that type of thing gets in your head and skews your like excuse you. So I think, um, there was a point where on, again, like the way people want to use it in terms of like the Twitter bubble, like they want to use it for all these things that aren't WordPress related. 
So I think Astro got pulled into like really exploring that, really seeing if that was possible, like really trying to say like, this is the ultimate framework for everything. Uh, and they did push that far. And I think a lot of that is possible if you want to go that route. Yeah. But really where their value is, is like these obvious places where obviously you would, you would use Astro and there's like no reasonable other option. And those tend to be like the WordPress sites, the big public facing sites, documentation sites. Yeah. Um, there's doubling yeah, down on that. I think they're, they're back to focusing on that now. Yeah. It's really interesting now for me to think about where they're headed and, and what kind of things will crop up. Because it does seem like there'd be a pretty big leap for somebody who's run like the, a WordPress site for years and that's all they know to like get started with Astro sounds like a big undertaking still. It still yeah, feels it like is. very, yeah, it's very developer first, I guess is the, mm -hmm. the yeah. idea I would think of. Uh, so it's interesting to see how the, I'm very curious to watch that evolve and turn into something that like a small business owner could spin up a site with Astro <laughs> yeah, like they would with WordPress. Yeah, I think the the order they're doing it in is perfect because you start with like the most high skill version, then you like yeah. slowly build up from there to like just lower effort offerings, mm -hmm. and that works well because they can always the all the trade off is the low code no code thing is restrictive, and when people need to escape out of that, it feels like yeah. shit because it wasn't built in that direction. But because it's yep. built in this direction, uh. The lower level is actually going to be very nice because that's where yeah, they started. You can hire a developer, like you could have a developer that knows Astro yeah. that could really go anywhere with yeah. it because it started that way. That's, that makes yeah. sense. What, what's the old crusty thing that SST is competing with? Uh, well, that's, <laughs> what's you know the what WordPress sucks? equivalent? Well, the, I think what's interesting and why I'm really motivated and why I find my job interesting is because we're actually not competing with anything. Because I really mm. feel like it's like a new thing that we're suggesting that people drop into their stack. The way yep. I think about it, like the simplest way to explain it is uh, there was a time where no one thought about formatting. Like formatting your code wasn't like a thing we all automatically did. And at some point, someone like invented a formatter and they were like, every single project should have a code formatter built in that's going to format your code and all of that. And then it yep. became a thing that is like a default part of everyone's setup now. Um, so I think we're like trying to do something like that, where we're like this type of thing that defines everything your app needs outside of the code yep. is something that should just be in every project. Um, and I know like, we're not like the first to that, like infrastructure's code has been around for a while, but in the but form that we're adoption, trying to do. Yeah. Like yeah. it hasn't fully taken on i guess there's still a lot of especially web developers that just don't understand it, it's that gap to like they're used to throwing their thing over the fence to get deployed to by the operations team or someone. yeah, yeah, yeah the operations yeah. teams use these tools and it's yeah. well adopted there yeah yeah uh yeah. the formatting thing i think about that like at least every month about how i used to have to like think about the format of my code <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it sucks so bad yeah and then so because you thought about it you had opinions of it and then because yeah. you had opinions and of it other people had different opinions yeah and people yeah. argued about it that's not a thing that happens anymore thank you prettier and all the other tools in that space black I used to do some python yeah. work it's widely impactful like yeah. just the reduction of discussion around this and thought yeah it's like every yeah. time you save a file not thinking about it anymore it's nice yeah. Although I will say my new Vim, <laughs> uh, Prettier D works about 40% of the time. Really? I have <laughs> yeah, pretty good my, setup with well, it's It's my Prettier Astro D. files. There's something wrong with the Astro LSP or something. Mm -hmm. There's something I do in every Astro file or like 40% of them, 60% <laughs> of them that causes Prettier D to not work. Prettier works, but Prettier D doesn't. And that's what's incorporated in my new Vim. So then I have to like run the Prettier format command. It's just a mess. Sorry. I new Vim problems. I think you're gonna have to make a decision. I think you have to pick like, do you want to use Astro or do you want to use NeoVim? <laughs> I guess. I mean, I do wonder that sometimes. Like, am I actually gonna install VS Code again and and just embrace it for my Astro development? Well, you can just... try that Z editor that everyone's like super oh, into yeah? now. Wait, that's newer. Is that gonna have a chance at working I don't better know. with Astro? I don't know. Might, might as well try. <laughs> Is it more I mean, of like a VS more Code thing? It's definitely more batteries included type of thing okay now i'm curious because i hope he isn't listening 
I mean, I love Neo Vim. Neo Vim's my favorite. But like I hear about something like Zed and it's like when I used to be addicted to World of Warcraft and I would hear about a new game and it's like, I know I'm never going to play it because I just play this all the time. <laughs> uh, it's just like that. It's like Zed came out and I was like, that sounds interesting, but I know I'm never going to use it because I just use Neo Vim. But maybe, maybe I could use it. Maybe I could just play with it a little bit. Just a to little detour. It. Just, just see try what you it. think. Uh, Wait, Zed Industries, is, is this it? Is this the website? No. It's kind of cool. <laughs> it's light mode. Zed.dev? No. Zed Multiplayer editor. code yeah, editor. It, it, yeah. It is Zed.dev. Interesting website. Can I just say? It they doesn't don't look even like have linear. It doesn't look like linear. <laughs> it's got this totally like grid thing going on. It's interesting. Yeah. I'm drawn in, but I did Look not expect that. to see Zed Industries at the top. Like, I'm at the wrong place for sure. Like, what? You make a code editor. What is the industry part of this? Anyway. Okay, now I'm I'm totally gonna download this and try it. Uh don't tell don't tell Teach. So did I tell you that I have a Mac now? <sighs> you have a Mac? I knew you had the iPhone. It started with the iPhone, and they lured you in. Every, was it everyone, iMessages? Everyone says this. Um, <laughs> was it yeah, iMessages? Everyone, everyone said that they were like, "You're gonna get, you're gonna get a, you're gonna get an iPhone, and you're gonna get a Mac right away." <laughs> what kind uh, of Mac? T talk to me more. Okay, more. So it's really funny. Uh, so Liz has an iMac, and I have my desktop set up, obviously. Um, Linux, by the way. Arch, by yeah, the way. Uh, of course. Nerd, uh, by the way. And she, <laughs> uh, my life is great. Um, <laughs> I know you believe that. That's why it's so funny to me. Like you is. really love your life, and I, I love it for you. But this, <laughs> it's continue. freaking amazing. Uh, <laughs> so it's ten years of arch that do it for you. Go ahead. So she's like, okay, I think I want to get a laptop because she likes to work from uh, coffee shops, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, okay, you know, when we travel, which we never, we never do. And actually a big part of it is because I don't have a good work setup as <laughs> I'm traveling. Have a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, I might as well not travel. <laughs> and I'm like, you know um, what? It would actually be good for me to like solve this so we can. And I, and I have a funny story about this I share after about traveling. So, uh, okay, let, let, let's get a laptop. You can use it and then I can use it when we're traveling. So we have like a shared laptop, which is, which is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, but so we're like, okay, what's the best laptop to get? It is by far a MacBook. And it's been yes. that way ever since the M chips because nothing comes close in terms of anything. Like with laptops, like the hardware matters a lot because there's, yeah. you're like carrying you it. Them up. Yeah. Yeah. There's up. battery, there's battery questions. Mm -hmm. There's performance questions. Cause you can't just put in the fattest processor ever in there. Uh, yep. There's trackpad things. And across those dimensions, like nobody really comes close to the point where I'm, I care more about that than the operating system. So we're like, okay, yeah. let's get, we got just the M3, uh, the M3 airs just came out. So we got an just M3 came Air, out. Yeah. 15 inch, uh, and it's really nice laptop. Yeah. And for me, well, it doesn't make that a new air, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. It, it's a, great. Uh, that you get the black one? color. Well, now the champagne. Okay, the champagne one. Yeah. No, they yeah, look or whatever really good. it's called starlight or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it's great because all I had to do was install Alacrity and then add station to my server and I'm back to, Oh, cause you're just doing all your normal, stuff on yeah. your server. Oh, so that, that's a plot nice. twist. I'm not really using Mac, but I get to use some of the cool things that I wish existed on Linux. So Raycast, uh, which so I don't I, think you I, use. I, I have it. I never use it. I use the confetti on when I stream. <laughs> it's like literally the only reason I have Raycast. <laughs> I don't know what it does. I don't even know what it does. So uh, I'd love to know. You know what's funny? Uh, I'm actually using it to study how far you can push like the command K bar concept because mm. obviously in all the products I've built, it is, it's like right? it's geared towards that. Yeah. And they yeah. like took it where you can kind of, it's like a whole operating system where you can like build apps inside this thing. Is this like Nix? So, is this the thing that you get into and then like that's all you talk about is raycast i think so i'm like not going that far into it i'm actually just more curious about their framework and their structure and so because like it's giving me yeah. ideas from like a ux perspective um mm -hmm. but i love doing things with my keyboard and i think raycast is great um it's just it's like you can appreciate how well they executed on this concept even if you don't use it to the to a crazy degree yeah. plus they have all this ai stuff in there now which is which is interesting oh really yeah mm -hmm. uh so that and really it's just that <laughs> i think that there's that and if 
I think there may be some other things. So you yeah, can I, use that on Linux. It's only on Mac, I guess. Yeah, it's it's like built it's built just for Mac, like with all like mm. the Mac native stuff. Um, yeah. I have a bunch of things I want to say. Can I say a few of yes, them go ahead. and then you can keep going? Uh, yeah. First, uh, Alacrity, really? Huh. As opposed that, to... What do you use on Linux? I use Alacrity everywhere, so it was oh, easy for me to just reuse it again. It's a Linux thing. Okay, too. Yeah, interesting. Well, I don't know. Ghosty is like, you know, the exclusive thing. I know, but... I know, I know it's, it's cool. <laughs> Are you saying exclusive? You fucking... Uh, I mean, you had to get invited. I'm just saying. Uh, it's not like I got a personal invitation from mitchell it was just i'm gonna i'm gonna go Discord. get a personal invitation from you mitchell. Can go I'm get gonna, a personal I'm, one i'm yeah. gonna send it to you okay yeah to make you feel bad uh, and i'm not so, even gonna install it <laughs> just, just download it <laughs> sitting in your downloads folder uh the other thing i want to say is on mac hardware or apple hardware the i used to work at best buy in the geek squad and people bring in their computers that are broken that they bought mm-hmm. at best buy and we fix them and at least like six to ten times a day someone would bring in a laptop that's like a dell or like a toshiba or whatever Mm -hmm. and it would be the exact same issue every time where the power cord has wiggled too much because they bump it into (laughs) stuff and we have to send it off to the service center to replace the motherboard because literally that thing can't like you can't just like fix the port and so that their laptop wouldn't charge anymore because it got wiggled too much too loose and now a whole motherboard replacement Apple with MagSafe, you don't have that issue. And that's like the one thing that I cared about on Apple. And then they got rid of it for a while, which was annoying, yeah, but they yeah. brought it back. It's the best invention that's ever been invented great. in computing. Transistor, whatever. <laughs> like we're talking MagSafe. You just pull it and it just snaps off because it's a magnet. It's brilliant. There's no like loosening. It's all hard and sturdy. And anyway, that's why you buy Mac. Uh, is it like crazy patented like why isn't that just copied to hell i don't know. know yeah that's a great question and why did they go away from it and like they just did the they were like well all you need is USB C ports and they went way too far with that and yeah. i guess that was the reason to not have magsafe but i'm so glad it's back it's the best yeah yeah it's great um yeah so, I'm so happy you're with apple, it. I, you're mac os now or are you gonna put mac os on your on your desktop now no that's actually kind of dead i don't think that that because with the with i mean people disagree What's with me dead? on this Putting last i posted on this operating yeah, systems bec- on desktop okay go ahead okay so i think there's a few interesting things here one uh i think the i think in the past apple's os was so good that you bought their hardware to have access to the os i think it flipped now where their hardware is so good you're like i want the m chips i'm down mm. to use uh whatever OS they're giving me yeah, and yeah. it's good. Right. But like, it's not the primary draw. So putting the OS on my Linux or on my desktop, there's not really an upside to that. Cause I don't get the hardware yeah. and the hardware is what I care about. Um, and then two, they have their own chips now. So they sold the last, the last Mac pro, the Intel based Mac pro. I think they mm-hmm. like finally like marked it as we're not selling these anymore, mm-hmm. which means in X amount of years, three, four years, I think the Mac Pro still supported for five years or something. They have no reason to ship Intel based Mac OS. Oh, right. Which is key to getting it working off of Mac hardware. Yeah. So I think um, in the future, mm-hmm. installing Mac OS on non Apple hardware is like, is basically going to zero. Yeah. You know what? Possible. Operating systems don't matter. And I don't mean that in like a, like a Twitter contrarian way. I just mean I've always thought like, it does it doesn't really come up that much. Like the thing that matters it. is it's in my browser window. That's what I use. It's like whatever's yeah. inside that pane. But like the operating system is so little part of my usage of a computer. I don't know. I guess there's certain apps that if you've been on Linux for ten years, you know that you don't just get everything that everyone else gets. And I guess if you're like a gamer and you're like, Well, it can't mm-hmm. run on Mac, well, whatever. If you're just like writing code and being a programmer or being an internet citizen in twenty twenty four your operating system is such a little part. Like I see all these announcements for like all the new stuff and I haven't updated to the latest Mac OS, whatever it is, Sonoma or whatever. And like, I just don't care. What is it? Like the, something in finder change. I don't care. Who cares? <laughs> like, <what? laughs> I don't know. I think operating systems yeah. are overrated. Like the fact that it's still a thing people market and like innovate on and whatever. And it just feels pointless. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. To me, it's, uh, like I said, for me on my desktop, I really need good window management and I haven't been able to recreate that on Mac OS. I think Have if you tried? I could, sorry, go ahead. 
I mean, I tried with this laptop a little bit. Uh, I'm down Have to try you tried further. The, the you buy. Yeah, which it's such a know, pain it, to install. Like the, yeah, the installation, which I guess there's reasons. But if it wasn't so hard to install, I'd yell it about it. It literally feels like Apple doesn't want you using it. That's what it feels yeah. like to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like you're jailbreaking your computer is what it feels like yeah. to me. Yeah. So there's that. And then I, I obviously game. So I'm always going to have a Windows machine for that. Uh, yeah. When do, you, when do you game? Oh, you don't have kids. Like when I, uh, it seems like all you guys game and like all my friends in the programming space are gaming. And I'm like, when do you even win? has kids. Prime has kids. He, he just wakes up at 4 a.m. to play. <laughs> okay. That, yeah, I guess if you're really into it, they just get up earlier. Okay. Mm. Interesting. I don't play that much and that often. And it comes in waves. So I can see myself still doing it occasionally Yeah. when I have kids. I don't mean it's that. Just, it's like, it's like a, an hour or two. Yeah. I, I really didn't mean it as like a productivity shaming or whatever. Like, no, no, no. how do you find no. time? I'm just busy being productive <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's no it's it all goes back to like my uh your priorities change too yeah yeah i just it's like relieving casey is my number one priority in life it's like as soon as i'm done working every day i am with the kids and letting her do what she wants to do so yeah yeah that doesn't leave a lot of time for anything i do watch one movie every weekend but now i'm feeling guilty about that she was like you got up early to watch a movie this morning i'm like yeah (laughs) she found out she found out what you were doing Yeah, no, she was like, wait, you, you got up at five to watch that before the kids got up? I'm like, yes, I did, because I want to watch one movie per week. I have a nice theater, and I want to watch a movie every week. Okay, By the so way, I... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I don't want to talk about movies more. Who cares? I didn't okay. watch what you suggested. I watched something else, so I'll talk about it later. Well, what did you watch? I just want to know what you watched. Uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Oh, yeah. That movie's really hard to understand. <laughs> I am so confused. I don't... <laughs> I still don't know what happened. I'm about to watch it like three times. Yeah, it's weird because I think I watched it. So I've seen it twice, and the first time I understood it, and the second time I had no idea what the hell was going on. Oh, so really? I feel like, like, did I literally get dumber? Like, is that what happened? <laughs> I watched it like five years later, and I was like, "This is I, what? Like, what I was happened so in this movie?" Lost. And I did feel like it was a good movie. It's one you know, of those like you feel like you're the problem. Like, no, this is my fault. Yeah, exactly. You guys did a great job, but this is my fault. I'm too dumb. But then you read a lot of people are too dumb, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, high bar on that. Um, so in that category, so did you see what I was posting about? I got a projector screen yesterday. Oh, like yeah, a proper one. Oh, you yeah, just so, got the project. Oh, the screen you just got. You had the projector. So I, I've had like a 4K short ultra short throw projector for years now, and we've loved mm-hmm. it because it's traveled with us when we used to split time between New York and Miami, and we always found a wall to throw it on, and it was like amazing, yeah. and, and we love it. And we had it in our other house against in the bedroom. It's kind of where we watched almost everything, like. 80% of what we watch was on there. And then in this new bedroom, we moved and we're like, oh, there's like no good wall in this ah. bedroom to put this on. Cause we have these two huge double doors that lead out to the backyard, which we love, yep. but that's where the wall would have been. Uh, so we're like, Hey, like, let's get a screen. So we got a screen. We mounted it above the, um, the doors. So like it, it comes down in front of the doors. We want to use it and it goes back up. Ah. Uh, and that's holy shit. That's a good place the, uh, to put a, a retractable screen is in front of the door. Because it's like, yeah, exactly. you're in there. You don't need the door yeah. anymore. Unless you have yeah, kids and it's they just perfect. bust in and knock into the screen and knock it over. <laughs> yeah, anyway. The door locks. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> it's convenient uh, in the bedroom. Continue. Zuko was confused. He was like trying to go outside and he was just like, <laughs> what the fuck? He was like sniffing the projector <laughs> screen. the door shut? <laughs> Where did the door go? <laughs> yeah. And wow, the quality difference is insane. Like mm. it looks almost as good as my OLED TV now. Yeah. Like the blacks and everything. Like getting a like a good projector screen made specifically for the type of projector you have. Mm-hmm. Like I was blown away. So I did a bunch of projector screen research and I got this thing. Uh, and I also discovered they have floor raising ones now. Have you seen these floor raising projector screens that come out of the floor? Yeah. So you have a fixed uh, screen because you have a dedicated room, right? It's just yeah, like a, a rectangle. Right. How big is it, the screen? Uh, oh, I should know this. I'm basically a theater installer at this point. I think yeah. it's 140 inches. That's, 140 what I, yeah, that's what I assumed. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's fixed. You have dedicated room for it. Uh, but they have these ones now that are like, it's just like a horizontal bar. And you can install it like, if, if you have a living room, you have like a media console, you can put it kind of behind the media console on the ground. Mm-hmm. And... It comes up from the ground and it's perfectly Smart. tensioned. Yeah. So 
and then the uh and then you have the short throw projector on the media console so it lines up perfectly yep. so you can now have this like 100 inch screen that's completely hidden in your living room when you're not using it and for me i like i knew this was possible but i didn't know the quality was so good but like, the yeah. quality is it, it is it is like i can't understate this like this, what, having a good screen with it like it's incredible what's the cost comparison i haven't priced the tv it's, in forever it's like, more expensive well i mean more expensive than a tv <laughs> well if you're trying to get a hundred inch OLED, well, 100 of course inch it's not TV. More, yeah you can spend like a hundred thousand dollars on a giant tv but like yeah a normal tv but, that people buy like at best buy it's more yeah, expensive like a, than that but it's also a lot larger yeah i would say like a really good oled tv that's like 65 75 inches is probably like 4k 4 to 5k that's confusing um, I, because that's also a resolution. Let's, yeah, I let's know. say four thousand, four to five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can go cheaper, obviously, but I think if you want to get like, if you want to like push that, um, the projector itself is going to be around that price, and the, and the screen is like can be pretty expensive too, like a couple thousand there. So it's going to be more expensive. Yeah. But you know, me and Liz at this point, we never use our TV in the living room. It's just kind of like taking up space on our wall. Yeah, it's like TVs look don't look bad given how thin they are. But if you could we decorate don't, yeah, anything, we don't have a TV in any of our living spaces. We have one in our bedroom yeah. and we have our theater. But we kind of decided in this house, like we we don't need one. Like we don't watch in the living room. Like it's not a thing we're gonna do. Yeah, so. yeah. So, so the next time we like go and like really like figure out our setup again, I think I'm like out on TVs. Uh, I never watch them during the day. Even if you do watch them during the day. The short throw projector, since the light comes from the bottom, yeah. the screens are optimized. They're like textured in a way where they ignore light coming from any other angle than from mm. directly underneath. So even if you're uh -huh. in, in a bright room, it still looks very good. Um, and then again, the, the fact that you can like roll down and be completely invisible if it's in like yeah, it's pretty a awesome. non-dedicated room. Like some of the some of the videos I saw of setups with that, like yeah everyone should be doing this like it's the room looks way nicer without this like huge screen just mounted on the wall permanently yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense yeah we, we've yeah. got the theater so i could go on and on about projectors and screens and yeah all kinds of things but uh but it's, for the living room that's awesome yeah yeah and it's also kind of obvious because like obviously movie theaters use projectors still so the yeah. best of the best is is still a projector yeah, I guess the big draw, the big knock on them was, and you got ahead of it, but the the light, like if it's ambient, like there's a bunch of daylight in the room, it's harder to see. Yeah. But yeah, if they've gotten better with that, and it makes sense that the short throw would be better at that, I would think. Yeah, we also never watch TV during the day, and uh, that's like a yeah. lifestyle thing. Yeah, yeah, we we watch stuff after the kids go to bed at night. That's if we ever watch anything, that's what it would be. Yeah. So yeah, at this point, I'm like, I guess I just am probably never going to buy a TV again. Like, this, is, this is just a better wow. option. End of an era. Dax isn't buying TVs anymore. He's buying MacBooks. What is this <laughs> world that we live in now? <laughs> yeah, th th this is like me switching into serverless. Like I have all these smart sounding reasons, but really I just wanted to change. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just, just bored. <laughs> Stale. He's got crusty. Yeah, and it, uh, it happens. Yeah, right after I put all this effort in mounting that TV like perfectly center at the exact right height uh we just haven't used it <laughs> so uh, that's funny that's fun the second thing i wanted to tell you about is the traveling thing i was talking about earlier so me and liz have not traveled at all since we like started dating and now we're married we basically well, uh wait. you haven't traveled like meaningfully i mean like, you we went haven't like, to, gone on vacation you went to really it. Oh, on vacation. Okay. Yeah. So as okay. I say, you brought her, like you guys both came <laughs> yeah, yeah, to Rienda. Yeah. No, no, like, no. Like we, we, we flew yeah, places yeah. together before, but we've never like taken a vacation together. Yeah, yeah. Um, vacation. Gotcha. You, you, you're going to laugh. I can't wait to tell you this. So, because <laughs> uh, we got together, then COVID happened. Then we got really busy with work and like just, it just hasn't been like a thing that we wanted to spend money on. And so we like never went on a honeymoon, even after we got married. Um, Which so is pretty common, like, right? That's not like. Yeah, it's it's not yeah. the weirdest thing, but given so how like expensive do a delayed traveling it is, honeymoon. Yeah. yeah, continue. I know where this so is I'm like, That's why. I, yeah, I'm like, okay, we just have to. We have to travel. Like, we have to do it. Like, we need to go spend a bunch of money and like actually travel. I've like literally never been to Europe. I haven't been to a lot of places. Yeah, same. So I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, I got wind that Bitcoin halving was coming up. Like, you know yeah, how yeah. like 
the the radio yeah, comes out. Yeah, very rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I was like, let me just let me just buy a lottery ticket. So I <laughs> <laughs> I bought, and this is the funny part. So I bought, so there's a company called MicroStrategy, and I'm sure you you've come oh, yeah. across this stuff before. Yep, yep. Uh, Michael, what's his name? Michael yep. Saylor. It's run by yep. the company doesn't do anything anymore except buy Bitcoin. That's all it does. All it does is just yeah. buy Bitcoin infinitely. Uh, and he has this like really crazy hack to like do it basically for free. Um, but they're publicly traded. So you can like buy stock in this company. So it's like a weird hack to publicly buy Bitcoin yeah. in like a normal market. And they also sell options against it. And, mm. and for, if you're not aware options, the, lo the the only thing you need to be aware of is you can risk a lot more and make a lot more with options. <laughs> so I bought a bunch of options uh, a few weeks ago into into MicroStrategy. Yep. And literally two days later, they were up like 400%. It was insane. <laughs> and I made like almost 15K in- uh, That's amazing. In a couple of weeks now. Um, and I we just, we like sold it all and we took the profits and we're just gonna spend it uh, on a vacation on a vacation we're gonna go to spain uh barcelona specifically and south of france which is nearby wow. uh, so we're gonna finally have our honeymoon because of this random bitcoin thing that happened that's amazing <laughs> you never hear yeah. the success story on like person invests in thing thing goes up they actually sell and take exactly. the profits <laughs> <No. laughs> so like they watch it go back down yeah well it's that's funny because all all the greed was kicking in and I was like, I'm just going uh, to, yeah. I'm just going to hold it. But Take I was it like, to the, the moon. <laughs> I had this driving thing of like, a vacation. we deserve to go on like a honeymoon and like we do. haven't done yeah. this and we put this off for so long. So like that kind of forced me to force me to sell. I still have yeah. some, I still have some in it and, uh, it's up. Okay. I'm looking at my thing. It's up $8,000 today. So jeez uh well <laughs> the having is still a little bit away right so weren't were you thinking like you were going to time it with like you're no, investing I, now and then the, the selling after weird the everyone knows it's coming up so everyone is oh so it's kind of priced it, in maybe it just keeps yeah but like i've just seen this enough times where i know it goes up or yeah when around when this happens for no reason uh and like the fed minutes were yesterday and they like said they're not gonna hike and that like Oh, they're, what, what's the, yeah, I haven't heard the latest on interest rates. They're not, they're not cutting them yet, but they're also not hiking them. Not so hiking them, okay. So th that like, the market Something. is up the last two days a bunch, because then obviously Bitcoin is up, which it should be the opposite, which is how funny broken it is, but <laughs> uh, Bitcoin is up as well. So, so I was trying, yeah. I've been scrolling Twitter for three minutes now, just trying to find, somebody is in, in Paris right now, France? I saw the Eiffel Tower yeah, yeah, on Vic, my Twitter. Vic. Vic isn't is that what it is in Paris? It's funny because <clears> you didn't say it, mention it at all, and all of a sudden you just keep seeing these pictures that seem oh, like they're in Vic. France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he, he was talking about, about walking how... to the bakery. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I remember when he said something to me, and I was like, "Oh, I didn't mean it that way." And he's like, "I need to go to sleep." And I was like, "Well, it's like two in the afternoon. What do you mean?" <laughs> and then I, figured, I figured it out later. Like, oh, he's in Europe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so I don't think we're gonna go to Paris. I think we're gonna stay by the ocean and the and the southern side. But South France is that like less touristy? Are you trying to go for like an edgy? You would do like an edgy vacation where you're like, we don't go to the places you would go to, <laughs> normal people. <laughs> well, I don't like I don't like uh, going to stuff. Yeah, I'm with that you. makes sense. I also don't yeah. like. Going I think to most stuff. people yeah. don't. It's like everyone feels like they have to because you're supposed to. It's like, to. what do you do? You take a picture of it? Like, I could find a million pictures of it right yeah. now on my phone. Uh, <clears throat> I basically, and this is the same, we just like pretending like we live somewhere. <laughs> so you like, like go, like into to go the, there like, and like pretend to have like a normal rent day. Rent a house in the village and just like, what would it be like? Actually, I, I can relate to that. We, when we went to Maui, we stayed mm -hmm. not on like the West Coast where all the resorts Lahaina and all that. Yeah, all the resorts. Yeah. We just stayed in an Airbnb in the middle of Maui and it was like, this little town that had this it was like this uh health food store that's really famous there and we wanted to stay in that town and just like go to the store every day and see what it felt like so we did that for a week it was nice but it was also hot yeah. no air conditioning turns out hotels are pretty nice <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, i think mean, people are people are like slowly realizing that about airbnb and they're like you know yeah. what yeah someone cleaning hotels up were and a good invention. <laughs> yeah like having like 
people clean up the room and the towels yeah. and all that like mm-hmm. that's kind of nice <laughs> and basically benefits. the same price so <laughs> yeah yeah uh but yeah so when, we like when are you going travel did that you way. say when no we were probably gonna book everything this weekend um we don't know when like it's like peak anytime we want to go is like peak pricing season but thanks to bitcoin maybe we don't need to care <laughs> hey maybe not <laughs> it's amazing uh i've got three there's like three i gotta book three flights for april mm-hmm. and it's not me well it's like i've got a work thing at the beginning mm-hmm. of the month it's literally like me and casey are tagging so i go somewhere for three days literally at the very beginning of the month and then when i get home casey leaves the next day for a week to a volleyball camp and then when she gets home two days later i go to miami for react miami so it's like we are not going to see each other for the month of april I guess the end of April, but wow, yeah, it's like we never go anywhere, and now we're going everywhere back back. all at once. Yeah, yeah, in one it's, furious month. Yeah, like we were looking at tickets, and the per like insanely cheap tickets happen to be like the week before React Miami, and we're like, ah, uh, that's too much. We can't. That's too. We can't do it. That's yeah, like because you're like hosting a party. We're hosting, and- yeah, and like people are saying so. uh I don't know. Maybe we haven't decided anything yet, but maybe we'll do it back to and, have, and my brother's graduating at the end of April, so we have to go to Indiana. Like, <laughs> oh wow, that's random. Why do I not be know that's your Indiana Midwest. roots? Is that a college? Roots. My, uh, yeah, what are you talking about? Indiana? Indiana. Oh, my he's brother in in is in college. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking high school, like lives with your family in Indiana. Like, what? Your parents live in Indiana? No, I no, you. I'm Indian. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> like Indians move to America, they're like, I guess Indiana. Yeah. You got to pick a place. <laughs> Why not? Oh, that's funny. Uh, is that um, how it was named? I mean, obviously not for my kind of Indian, but for like Native American. I have America. no idea. They were like, I this have... place is really Indian. <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> that was how it. <laughs> oh man, it's so unsophisticated. Oh, it's so unsophisticated. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because a lot of stuff is just described like when you think when we go to name anything now it's like this big high effort process of like what do we want this to convey uh but so many places are just named for such dumb reasons like i live in a i live in coconut grove and literally (laughs) the only reason it's called this and it's actually a nice sounding name right it sounds like ooh, like you know yeah whatever uh but some guy when this area was completely unsettled he was like trying to like rig something where he like got like ownership of all of the land and he was doing this weird hack of like incorporating a post office here <laughs> like he was like filing for yeah. permits for a post office so he just made up coconut grow because he happened to see two coconuts and he misspelled it he spelled it <laughs> c-o-c-o-a like coco coconut uh-huh. uh yeah. grove and he filed for a post office thing and like his plan didn't work out so he just bailed and then like <laughs> it technically was on record as, as being called coconut grove coconut so then it grove. just it's just coco stuck coco nut <laughs> oh, yeah i think they, they they fixed that but yeah there, there's some funny. older signs around that still say cocoa nut <laughs> grove. <laughs> wow uh, yeah. yeah most yeah. places are named after like some geographical feature i don't know mm-hmm. water bend or something what you're uh bring what, what are you from uh what, i grew up Springfield? in willow springs i'm pretty sure that was like there's a willow tree by the spring willow springs uh <laughs> springfield yeah interesting there was probably a spring in a field yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb the ozarks are ridiculous yeah uh, yeah it's mountain funny grove wow mountain all grove. of them mountain the grove. Word grove people love the word grove they throw the word grove on onto anything yeah, it sounds fancy yeah, yeah it does sound fancy yeah i feel my, like my there's a restaurant neighborhood. grove in it that i liked i don't remember my parents neighborhood was called windmere grove just like Ooh, some vaguely british sounding fancy. yeah like rich thing windmere uh, that's windmere. like Ooh, yeah, yeah. Just i feel like that something. costs a lot of money to live there just immediately <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you go there it's just like the typical uh neighborhood with like 300 houses five models just copy pasted over and over <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. uh I've got to. Yeah. I've got to go to Europe. I'm so jealous that you're going to Europe. The the. Big... Have you never been there? No, my brother. So my never brother's left a Missouri. pilot. I have left Missouri. You keep trying mm-hmm. to spread this rumor. I love when you get something <laughs> in your head where you're like, "I'm going to make this a thing," and you just keep saying it. <laughs> I've been all over the place. I'm quite a traveler, just not to Europe. Uh, okay. 
my brother is a captain with Delta just recently. Yeah. Uh, and he, they went to Europe. He can just fly to Europe. Him and his wife just went on a vacation for free to Europe. Not like he was the pilot. Like he can just, he just gets ride on any Delta flight. Yeah. He yeah. For he can jump on the so jump awesome. seats or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's just amazing. That is really cool. That's and like a crazy it, perk. Oh yeah. What a crazy, cause it's such an expensive thing to fly around. Mm -hmm. To be able to do that for free and to have like a buddy pass and all that. Like once he gets more senior and he can choose those, because those are the ones people want are the long like international flights, like pilots, the most senior yeah. people fly those international flights. Uh, then he could just be flying those legs and it's like vacation all the time. As part of your work, you're going to these cool places. I don't know. Yeah, that is really crazy. What, what are his roots now? I'm, I'm Where does he generally go? Uh, Within the US? Yeah, it's all domestic. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Oh, I say that. I don't. I shouldn't ask him what he's doing lately because the last time I talked to him, it was totally different. Like he he used to be with American, and then he moved to Delta and started over, and uh, so he flies a lot out of Atlanta now. It turns That's out he's like in Japan right now, and you have no idea. Yeah, right. He's, <laughs> he's flying all the international legs. I don't know what I'm talking about. He's like in Madagascar. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, also. I don't know if it was always as expensive, but man, traveling is really expensive and I'm surprised really that so expensive. many people do it. I I'm know. Like, how is everyone affording to do this all the time? I think about this with lots of things because like we've done pretty well. We live in a really cheap area. I've made a high income for like 15 years and yeah. I feel like I see people do stuff and I'm like, how can they afford to do that? Like I would never do that and like we're pretty well off, but how do so many people do it? There's, yeah. certain, there's certain things in American culture that are like normal and it's like, that's, yeah, travel, super expensive. But maybe yeah, it's, it's just because it's Twitter. We see everybody, or I don't know where you're seeing people travel, but we see like everybody and like maybe that's the only time they've ever traveled or maybe they don't do it very often. No, at all, I but think it feels like, no. I think everyone that I generally, most people like me are more traveled than I am. Like most people have been yeah. to more places than I have. Same. Um, but I'm like smarter than them. So what is up with that? <laughs> well, that's why, because you've not spent your money traveling. It's, it's, uh, you're smart. Uh, <laughs> no, but yeah, so I'm just like, everyone's just traveling all the time. And then when I go look to do it, I'm like, yeah, I'm not like going to do multiple of these every year. Like, that's crazy. Right. Maybe yeah. they like travel in a different way where it's like more for, I don't know. Just, but there's no getting around the flights. The flights are always in yeah. like half the cost of everything. So yeah. Uh, yeah. If I, I guess like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe uh I my brain just shut off. I, I don't think that's ever happened on the podcast where like I had a thought and it just literally went somewhere else. No, that happens sometimes. Like it's completely gone. I can't I can't think of what it was. What, what were you even talking that, about? It's a I sign that you're deteriorating. Yeah. I'm deteriorating. <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't know what we were just talking about. Were we talking about travel? Traveling and how expensive it is. Yeah. It wasn't like the thought got replaced with another thought. It, just, it was it just like, blank. Yeah, it was like I literally sometimes. had nothing in my brain. <laughs> I felt like I died for a second. That was weird. Anyway, it must not have been that good. I, it happens. Don't worry. It. You're probably not dying. Casey <laughs> like talks about uh, she's going to get me checked out for my memory like all the time. Like yesterday, but, we, yeah, we, we talked about this before. Where I think like every wife feels this way about their yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't remember yeah. that. See? <laughs> More evidence. I, I just, I've got to get it checked out. What are they going to check? Uh, are they going to just like <laughs> give you like a, a test? brain scan? I don't know. Yeah. What do they like scan your brain and look for the memory center? I don't know. I don't know anything about. Oh brains. man. Speaking of brain scan, did you see the uh, Neuralink thing? No. I mean, I know I've heard of Neuralink, but something happened. Okay. So here's a here's what I find hilarious. So a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a couple of months ago, there was news that somebody. A human got the first Neuralink implant in their brain. What? And we were all, okay. That's the reaction we all had. We we're all like, "That's so crazy! Like, it must like what a crazy thing to do!" And uh, yeah, it must be some like crazy guy that's like so obsessed with becoming a robot. <laughs> well, we all had this like stereotype of what we imagined that this person was. Yep. And they put out a video yesterday. Do you know who it was? Can you guess who? who? It's a person that we would know who it is. No, 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 no. It's famous. It person? wasn't no. We all had this expectation of this to be some, some like crazy sci-fi obsessed person. It yeah. was a person that was paralyzed from neck down. Oh. And this thing gave them the ability to use a computer. They can like use a mouse on a computer with their with their brain. And they was like playing like chess on the computer. And I'm like, wow, 
we all saw this as like some crazy yeah. like early adopter thing. extreme yeah. yeah but like it has this crazy practical place where it makes total sense massive impact on this person's life and it makes total sense for for them it's not like this weird like wild idea yeah um, so huh. and he said the first telekinetic human isn't that insane that's really cool i need to yeah. learn more about the Neuralink stuff like what they're yeah. actually capable of doing is it mostly just like peripheral you become like a peripheral <laughs> for your computer or is there other I, I, stuff you I can think, control i think because the videos i've seen before was a monkey playing pong i think with with this brain yeah uh, and i think so yeah i think right Wait, now monkeys it, can play pong like they're smart they, enough to like follow the little ball around yeah they, they, they teach them to play pong with the joystick and they slowly remove the joystick with oh one once they implant in yeah that's um, impressive and, and they like give it treats whenever it it scores or whatever uh <laughs> and it's not a monkey it's, it's i think it's a chimpanzee so oh let's be politically uh, correct here yeah uh, <laughs> don't offend someone is offended the about apes that, on I'm twitter sure. yeah <laughs> well, now they have Neuralink. they might be getting online who knows who uh, knows we're gonna be joined yeah. not the so, only species on twitter <laughs> so it's uh yeah it, it's really crazy and i'm like wow this is this is gonna make such a huge impact and what i think it's amazing about the human brain and i'm so glad it works this way um and there's been so much research that has or experiments that have proved this uh you can incorporate new senses to feel native in your brain so like beyond the five senses there's new yeah things like if you get sense. like a new like they, they, they've done this where they've taken blind people and they've put like a like a electrode array on their tongue and they've mm -hmm. like projected images by like stimulating the senses in their tongue and eventually the person has an intuitive sense of like what it looks like the thing wow. that they're being shown so your yeah. brain can like incorporate new like it's like you know like a usb port like you, you, yeah. you, you your brain develops a driver for it eventually <laughs> uh so that's for this person drivers yeah yeah for this person moving the mouse starts to feel like a natural Thing that they can do it to them it probably feels like they have telekinesis like, it doesn't feel like yeah oh i'm like manipulating this thing that's letting me do this it just feels like i'm natively controlling the mouse uh which is really wild and like it's crazy what that potentially <laughs> means to the future i wish i could experience it like i just wonder like are you thinking are you thinking like i'm moving my mouse to that or are you just looking no. like what no it's what? not that you know? it's like it's uh it's not that you're thinking i'm moving the mouse it's you feel it's like skipping that step i think i can kind of like relate this to other things uh you know how i'm sure you took some language class in high school do they have yeah, other languages in Missouri? Two, two years of spanish yeah in, in the ozarks <laughs> it turns out <laughs> like i've heard of other languages before um so you, <laughs> when you were in that class and you read something in spanish there was a step in your brain where you translated it to English first and then to, to then understand it. Or yeah, the other way yeah, around, yeah. you like thought of it in English first and you translated it to Spanish to say it. Mm. Um, you see how eventually, if you get good enough with the language, that stops being the process and you just start mm -hmm. like intuitively understanding Straight the to, Spanish. Yeah. There's no yeah. translation step. It's yeah. like so it's kind of like that. that I think you, yeah. Apps yeah. on Mac that work through the Rosetta thing versus like yeah. The native. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no translation. Yeah. Huh. So I think that's where you get to and your brain is capable of doing that with new, yeah. new inputs. You're totally uh, going to get this chip in your brain, aren't you? As soon as you can. Eventually. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, like, like <laughs> this is messed up, but whenever I think about like, Oh, if I'm in an accident and I like, and I lose my foot, I'm like, I'm kind of excited about that. Cause I kind of want like a bionic <laughs> a foot. That lets, foot. That lets, you, you, know the ones are, you know, the ones that are like springy. Yeah, they're like curved like this. They're like an athletic advantage. Yeah. yeah. So I've always been very close to dunking. I've been like, if I could jump like <laughs> one or two inches higher, I could dunk. I've yeah. never had a satisfying dunk. And with this thing, I think I could get there and have a satisfying dunk. <laughs> you just had a fake foot. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Would it feel a little cheaper though if you dunked with your fake no, foot? No, I don't care about that. You don't care. Who cares? I love just cheating. Dunk. It feels even better <laughs> that it's fake. <laughs> You're tall. Uh, Can you dunk? You I could basketball? in high school. I can't jump mm. anymore. I mean, I don't think. I haven't tried. Yeah, I'm sure my vertical I, I, has gone down a lot as well. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like way more so than other things. Vertical and like speed, like sprinting speed. 
seems yeah. to deteriorate quickly. We were just running around in the yard the other day playing tag, and I felt so slow. I remember feeling <laughs> so fast in high school, and I yeah. feel like at 37, it's gone. I feel like I'm strong. I can still be strong if I want at 37, but yeah. fast and big vertical, no, probably not. Yeah, I know. It's what kind of sucks. Like, So growing up, uh, I was very good at jumping. I could jump extremely high and far and everything, and that yeah, was not, like... You're not like super tall, so it's no. surprising. Like If you're close to dunking, that's... Yeah, so That's that was like my angle for being good at sports. Like any sport yeah. that involved any kind of jumping, like I always out rebound people and I always like jump over people. That was like the way I was good at it. And yeah. now I have to like actually be good at the sport because <laughs> I can't. I don't have That's this like weird. Man, like the old yeah. man tricks. You got to start getting all yeah, like exactly. I did, yeah, and I remember <laughs> when I would when I would play ultimate in high school. We play in the summer with these guys that were older occasionally. And I would always think like, wow, like they're always in the right place at the right yeah. time. Like they're just so smart about their be. positioning. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I have to go do that now. Yeah. Uh, That's funny. Yeah. It is really, it's crazy. Um, maybe you should bust out cleats for when you're playing tag in the backyard. That might, that might help. <laughs> I've probably still got some. Just lace them up. Yeah. I have cleats, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I probably didn't throw them away. That's funny. <laughs> yeah but yeah i'm stronger than i've ever been in my whole life um i'm not stronger than i've ever been i i was just talking about this with my personal trainer uh i wish i were mm. i feel like old man strength is a thing and i've just slacked off enough in adulthood or maybe i just got really in high school i was like three years of varsity football like it was like a lot of weight training right like yeah i was bench i think i maxed at like 290 which pisses me off so much that's so but crazy i got so close to 300 but i didn't bench 300 <laughs> now it's like i have to start over and like i'm yeah. trying to get that goal in life uh i could squat a ton i can't remember what i squatted but my squat was way more impressive than my bench power clean all those things i was really strong in high school uh and yeah. it kind of it's really disappointing to think about like an 18 year old me could have beat me up like <laughs> <that> sucks <laughs> Like, I'm so yeah. much weaker than I was when I was a baby. Like, yeah. just how little we were in high school, it just seems crazy. Like, I should be stronger, but yeah, I'm not. I'm still gonna. I'm gonna be working my way up again. Well, the, he he couldn't beat you up because now you have training in jujitsu. That's so true. It, I if you're both on the jiu-jitsu. ground, yeah. yeah, I'm a white belt, one stripe. People, okay. <laughs> I know things. I know some things about jujitsu. Yeah, I think you can beat up your 18 year old self. I think yeah, maybe. I think most people have a different experience than you. I think it's more similar to my experience where when I was young, I played a lot of sports and we'd always like, but I never played like football. So like, mm. yeah, we had to go do weight training, but like we never like took it that seriously. It wasn't super serious. Yeah. Yeah. All we had so was like football. football and basketball, like we didn't have wrestling. We didn't have ultimate Frisbee. Are you kidding me? You had like <laughs> ultimate Frisbee as an organized sport you could play. Well, it was invented in like in New Jersey. So it was kind of, it's oh, like okay. really big there. Um, yeah. We yeah, literally I used had to play like with the uh, three core MK sports. BHD. I think I told you this, right? Oh yeah. That's yeah. crazy. I can um, picture you two out there throwing the frisbee around. <laughs> it's got really <laughs> physical. It's, it's, weird. it's a weirdly physical sport. Really? Because because there's no referees and you're all oh, like teenagers and like full of like anger. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> and it, angst. Yeah, it, it gets pretty physical. Um huh. it was fun though. Uh but yeah, so like now I can't play sports. All I have is like I can't play sports as much. Like I don't have much yeah. time and it's not as fun because I'm not as, as good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all I have now is like weight training. So I'm weight way training. stronger yeah. now than I, than I've ever huh. been in my life. So have you considered jujitsu? Have you considered the martial arts? Uh, you say you can't play sports and I feel the same way, but jujitsu has brought that back to me. It feels like I'm making up for lost time. Okay. So no, it's not that I can't play sports. I still do. And I enjoy that more than, uh i would martial arts it's just not my thing i i, I get it and i, I mm. see how it's fun and i see why people like yeah. it but uh i really like team sports like i that's like um, one of the biggest reasons why yeah. i enjoy sports like the, like the team aspect of it and like executing stuff as a team um so that's big for me and i love like uh yeah i i think when i see jujitsu it's like really intense and focused and precise uh, where sports tend to have like these like like downtime then like moments of uptime mm. and downtime moments of up, yeah, like yeah. it's like yeah so i think i tend to like like that a little bit more okay well trash milky there's just a growing coalition yeah i know in the, in the everyone circle. all you, your you friends jay, are gonna be you know jay used to do jiu-jitsu also did he really yeah i keep finding out about people that used to do jiu-jitsu and that makes me sad because that means like there's a shelf life here i'm eventually gonna stop and i'm gonna be one of those people that have used to do jiu-jitsu 
feels like a thing I want to do forever, but I know it's going to stop. But why did he stop? Why did Jay stop? Well, this has nothing to do with jujitsu. It's like this with everything. Oh. Like how many things yeah. have were you, you, you used to stream on Twitch? You used That's to. true. <laughs> hey, I still <laughs> stream on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah that's we a good used point. to do a bunch seasons, of seasons seasons of life yeah speaking of seasons i need to move on to a different season of this day i think it's time to, to eat food <laughs> i haven't eaten i uh i actually haven't eaten in 24 hours i fast a lot lately because of wow. jujitsu it's just introduced Wait, so many positive habits why are you life. fasting because of jujitsu i mean i'm cutting i've got a oh, competition in two weeks and i go through a lot of bulking and cutting these days which is mostly just like I don't eat for two weeks before my competition. <laughs> so I can fit in the back of a uh, oh. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I uh, so I forgot when I was doing this or when I stopped. I was on I was keto for like three months and I dropped a bunch in weight. And now I'm going the opposite direction where I'm trying to like gain as much weight as possible. Mm. Um, it's hard. I'm on a, I'm on a going eat. up phase. Like if you're weight training and you're trying to like build mass, it's really hard to eat enough of what you need. I mean, I'm going to say protein, but I hate the it It's impossible the word to eat enough protein. It is it's 100% so impossible. Anyone who it's says it's so not hard. is lying because it yeah. is impossible. Like if you really get how much you should get for like building strength and mass, it's like a full-time job. You're just basically always eating. It sucks. Yeah, it is so impossible. Filling. Protein's so filling. So like anything you're eating that's high protein is like you don't want to eat again after you <laughs> like if I eat 50 grams of protein with breakfast and I'm like, I don't need lunch or dinner. I'm good. Yeah, I know. And I need another 150 or whatever. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It is. If you actually measure it out, you're like, everyone's like not getting enough protein. At oh yeah. All. yeah. Yeah. I mean, in ter- well, in terms of like building strength, most people like my wife, like people that don't care. Oh yeah. Like they're, yeah. Getting, they're fine. Like there's no such, there's no like medical term for not getting enough protein. It's just like you're malnourished. You're not eating enough. <laughs> but if you're trying to like build strength and do these stupid athletic yeah, things, then exactly. yeah, it's it's way harder. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, this was long. I feel like ah, I'm going to stop saying that. It's an uh, hour and 20. Whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> deal We're it. slowly inching up. We inch up. <laughs> or like our average has been inching up slowly. Yeah. And then eventually, uh, eventually we're gonna we'll be, be at the... Joe Rogan levels. Yes. of like Four hour podcasts. Get <laughs> yeah. ready. Oh, man. All right. All right. See you, Dex. See ya.